Hi everyone, my name is Moshe Baum. I'm the product manager for assembly areas in PTC CAD segment. I'm responsible for uh, assembly top-down design uh, mechanism and analysis tools and also the design exploration extension. I just want to give a quick overview of um, what is the history behind this new extension um, and then I'll hand it over to Todd for the uh, live uh, demonstration. So the reason we developed design exploration extension is really based on multiple different type of customer requests and the customer uh, challenges that uh, led to basically the same uh, the same need and the same solution. So many times it either during the early conceptualization stage or later on when you have a very detailed design in hand and you want to make uh, significant modifications to the design. A lot of times, in most uh, common practice is simply duplicating the design to a different folder or different environment where you can play around and make changes to the design without risking the original models. And many times, customers were trying to try out a new change. If they uh, didn't, uh, weren't sure, they would try to undo this change and make a, a different change, but then you can't reproduce what you were doing before the last, last undo. So it really started from how can we make more than one undo and still be able to roll back and try again what we tried before we did this undo. So that led to creating a new environment where, where it's really kind of an undo on steroids where instead of just one undo you can really store what we call the checkpoint and we also allow you to reproduce the state of the model later on so you can create modifications in a, in a design and you can go back and forth between those different checkpoints and then when we developed that capability then it became even more interesting and then we said okay so now why would not that we support more than one path of uh, development? What if I can do a certain undo in uh, over one uh, change of the design and then go back to the previous previous point and then try a completely different modification? So that leads to kind of form of branching of concepts. And that's really what design exploration is all about. Design exploration is about letting users working with the model in a safer environment when you don't have to worry about risking the original design because whenever you enter that environment all iterations that are being done in that mode are reversible so you don't apply any changes to the original design until you are ready to do so and this is only when you decide to accept a certain checkpoint and Todd will be showing this live in a few moments so the, mo the most significant uh, benefit of that, uh, of that capability is that it eliminates the need to duplicate the models before you consider new design changes. You can simply enter a mode within Creo that allows you to store different states and different iterations during the design. You can always roll back any iteration as much as you want and create new iterations and always you can reproduce any checkpoint that you store along the design without risking the model. Everything is stored within a single file that is separate from the model and you can always share this file with other users or reproduce any checkpoint that you have created along the design. The other, um, the other more advanced side of the story is what we call update control. And that really speaks to the, to the advanced assembly extension users, the AAX extension. So many times when you have um, assembly with skeletons or uh, some very complex interdependencies between components in the assembly, a lot of times, for example, if some user checks in a new version of a model that you are using also in your design and you have many other components in that design that are dependent on, on these models, many times the result of the changes when you update a new version are unpredictable. And if it's a top-down design, for example, imagine a skeleton that most of your assembly is dependent on this skeleton and suddenly this skeleton changes, 
many times it can break a lot of dependencies, it can uh, make a lot of unexpected changes to downstream models, and it's very difficult to manage those changes if you if it's a single shot of updating and praying that uh, nothing is going to explode in the model. So here again, the capability of being able to open or investigate the impact of changes in a safe environment like design exploration allows you basically to bring in any updates to a model, preview this change before you decide to update this change. It allows you to visually preview what is going to be the change in your model that you're about to update. And also you can instantly evaluate the impact of the change in a design exploration session and see whether you like this change or not and investigate what would be the downstream effect and you can also revert any of those changes back to the state before you make this update. So this is on very briefly all the capabilities of a design exploration extension that also contains update control um, and I will transfer now to Todd uh, for uh, showing it live and I'll be sticking around for uh, any questions. So Todd, I'm transferring to you. Okay, thank you Moshi. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go ahead and do a demonstration now of DEX. So whether you're in part mode or whether you're in sheet metal mode, assembly mode, you can always kick off a design exploration session. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I have my, my trailer on my screen. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, design exploration session and say start and we'll call it the trailer explorer session. Now this enters me into the sandbox that, that Moshi's talking about where I have uh, an existing model that I can make changes to dimensionally, features, I can add components, I can remove components, I can do whatever I want to and then I can capture uh, checkpoints along the way. Now I'm going to make a bunch of changes here to this trailer. I'm going to do so with some map keys just to make it a little quicker. So one thing I'm going to do right away is I'm going to modify the, the bed of my, of my trailer. Okay, So I've made it from, from 60 inches out to 120 inches. Now I'm going to say, let's go ahead and add a checkpoint. I'm going to say, you know, longer uh, trailer. Okay. I can add keywords to search on later. I can also add comments to just to make sure I, I kind of uh, remind of what I what I did there and add comments for for just for some clarification. Hit OK, and there's my my first checkpoint. I can go ahead and add uh, maybe an, a second wheel. Okay, and then add a checkpoint. Let's say uh, tandem. I can go ahead and uh, change my bed from wood to steel. Again, add a checkpoint. Let's go steel uh, floor. Okay. If I want to go back to the, the pre-modified one, I can always go back. I can go to whatever I want to. Go back to my steel floor one. And if I want to go ahead and, and do some more things here, I can add railing. Okay. Again, a uh, little map key that just replaced a component there. And I'll just go, I'll go railing. And let's go ahead and change our ramp in the back from, from that single ramp to those two double ramps. So we'll go ahead and, and add a checkpoint here and say uh, uh, two ramps. Okay. And again, I can go back and forth between the checkpoints uh, as I wish. If I want to uh, make larger wheels, okay, I can add a checkpoint. Okay, went from a 11 inch to a 15 inch wheel. Larger wheels. And then finally, if I want to add uh, these tie downs here, I can go ahead and add tie downs. Okay, so that's, that's our last checkpoint there. So add tie downs. If I go to my, uh, for example, my my checkpoint here, and I really didn't understand what was different between this one and the previous one, I can always go to my my view changes, and I can say, well, let's compare the the fourth one to the fifth one, okay, like this one. 
then I can zoom in there and I can see, oh, you know what was different there is I changed railing from that, or changed the ramp from the, the single ramp there to the double ramp there. And I can, I can do things, all kinds of things and show changes, uh, what I resume, what I suppress, what I, what's been deleted, what's been created, lots of different ways to kind of slice and dice the, uh, the graphics here so you can very clearly see what was different between previous models. Now, if I go to my, my last one here, that's kind of my final one, I say, you know what, this really isn't the direction I wanted to go. I'm going to go back to the longer trailer, and instead of, you know, um, going the direction I did, I can branch off and say, well, you know, here what I want to do is I want to maybe change from the single ramp to the double ramp, okay? And I'm going to add a checkpoint here and say uh, two, again, two ramps, okay? Just fits my, um, oh, I have that in there, two ramps, uh, uh, branch doesn't allow me to, to do the same name. Um, hit OK, reset. Two ramps branch. Okay, and then I can say, well, let's add um, maybe a couple tires and some tie downs, or one more change here. Okay, let's just add the floor, change the floor, and add some tie downs, and add another another, another branch here. So tie downs and floor. All right, so there's my, my other branch. And again, I can go back to whatever I want to in the future or in the past and really have a nice little recipe of, of different options. Whenever I'm happy with the one that I've, I went to, I can go ahead and say, OK, let's go ahead and, and leave this area. I don't need to save that session. Hit OK. And now here's my model. OK, and if I have drawings that represent that, I can go to my my drawing, and my drawings are already done for me uh, if I have that assembly in that drawing. So a uh, very nice little method of, of using design exploration to really find out if that's the design you want and all the benefits that Moshi talked about. So one more thing that Moshi talked about was, uh, was object control for our advanced assembly users. And I think that would be a good, a good reason to, to go ahead and go into that right now. So. What I want to do here is go ahead and um, uh, use design exploration to to go ahead and and uh, find out if I want to make a change or not uh, from a skeleton model. So instead of just modifying something at, the, something at the skeleton level and then hitting regenerate and watching it go ahead and change all of its children, I can go ahead and use design exploration in there to check and see if that's really the the the, the road I want to go down. So I'm going to go to my, my back model here. I'm going to turn on what's called uh, update with notification, OK? And I'm going to go up here to my, my skeleton model. And I'll go ahead and, and take a, a feature up here. Let's make this back of our model a little bit wider like that, OK? And hit OK, OK? So instead of that just proliferating down through my model tree, it actually gives me a little warning or a little notification that says that that there's a feature that's outdated. It's in the back mold. It's called the external geometry uh, feature, feature here. Okay, So I can go ahead and find that, or I can, could have used that little dialog box there. But I can go to my update control here, and I can say, well, let's go ahead and, um, and show the differences. So now I can actually check and see, is this really the direction I want to go? I'm going from, uh, from, this from, from this model here to this one. I can isolate that. And then here's my little explore update. I can actually enter into design exploration to see if after it generates, if that's really the direction I want to go or not. OK, that takes a few seconds to go into. because There's lots of, lots of uh, features to update. Or I could go ahead and say update. I'm, I'm comfortable with it. That's just part of the notification here. Okay, and that's a, a nice way of, of using design exploration to see if you really want to make a change or not. Now the last thing I'm going to do, just to kind of give you another little idea here, is that I'm going to go back to my trailer example. I'm going to close it up, and I want to just show you, you know, when you make a design exploration session. There's a little file called a TMZ file that gets stored. 
Okay, and what I can do, you can go actually do a whole session and then give that that TMZ file to somebody else. Okay, and this is what they would get when they open it up. They'd say, "Hey, you know what? I did about." 10 different iterations, I want you to check it out, see if you'd like them. So how val valuable is that? So instead of, you know, making a copy of something and making extra folders and, and maybe making lots of pictures for PowerPoint to show somebody different options, you can just make a design exploration session, zip it up and give it to somebody else. Let them take a look at all the different possible, op uh, you know, possible options. You know, from that checkpoint to that one to that one. So I just open this from scratch. So I just have a set of, uh, license of Creo, and you can say, well, you know, here's the start, and here's I think here's where the customer needs to go, and I can say, well, that's perfect. That's exactly where where I want to go. So you have I've just made nine checkpoints in one little file, very simple, very easy, and saves a ton of time. When this is typically, you know, this kind of work takes a lot more time uh, for a user to do. And you can say, well, you know what? Really, this is the this is the thing. You know, the, the guy likes tiny tires. Let's just kind of go with that. I hit OK. I hit OK there, and there's my model. Again, if I have uh, drawings to show on this one, I have an assembly drawing, or if I have bill of material drawings, those are all update. All the options I chose are all updated, though. I have my small tires. I have no tie downs, and we're good to go. Just make our scale a little smaller to fit uh, our views. And there we go.